Welcome. This is the Lifetime Cash Flow through Real Estate Investing Podcast. This is where you'll learn strategies to help you achieve lifetime financial freedom through real estate investment. Your host, Rod Cleef, has owned over 2,000 homes and apartments, and he brings experts in all aspects of real estate investment and management onto the show. Now, here's your host, Rod Cleef. Welcome to Lifetime Cash Flow through Real Estate Investing Podcast. I'm Rod Cleef, and I'm thrilled you're here. Before we get to our guest, I want to mention a couple of quick things. The first being, if you like what you hear, make sure you subscribe to us so you never miss an episode uh, on iTunes. Sub subscribe on iTunes, that is. And I also want to let you know that every week, I also do one of two short five to ten minute shows. The first being your driving for success tip, and that's where I talk about uh, the psychology of success. And, uh, and then the second being... Uh, my real estate success tips, uh, you know, real estate tip of the week. Uh, and so it's one or the other every week, and they're only three to five minutes. And I, in my uh, personal opinion, think they're very valuable. Uh, so highly recommend you listen to those as well. As m many people don't realize, 80% of success in anything is your psychology, and 20% is the actual mechanics. So, and the real estate tips are really what, what they are, is great tips uh, for anybody in multifamily real estate investing. And then lastly, and most importantly, I really want to hear what you guys think. If you've got any comments or questions or even suggestions for guests or topics that you might like to hear on the show, let me know. You can email me directly at rod at rodcleef.com. That's rod at r-o-d-k-h-l-e-i-f as in frank dot com. And I'd love to hear from you. All right, let's get this show on the road. I know you're going to get incredible value from the guy we're talking to today. His name is Mackle Smith, and he goes by Mac. He is a uh, successful real estate investor, but he's got an interesting story. Uh, he, he actually has a full-time job, and I'll let him tell you about that. And he's kind of doing this on the side very successfully. So, Mac, I'm very thrilled you're on the show. Great, Rod. I'm, I'm really happy to be here. So, so tell us a little bit about your background. Uh, expand on my, uh, my uh, short uh, introduction there because I kind of wanted, wanted it to be in your words. So, so tell us your history and, and then uh, how you got into real estate, how long you've been into real estate, and what your success has been so far. Sure, sounds great. So you know, I started off in the technology industry, um, I guess about uh, maybe almost 40 years ago. <laughs> so I've been, oh. I've been around for a good long time. Um, I've worked for the, the largest software developer in the world for the past 20 years um, and continue to do so today. Um, and I started really uh, in terms of investing. I, you know, about 36 years ago, my mother-in-law, when I first got married, gave me a, a, a small house that was set and flat on the ground, didn't have any foundation around it. And so my wife and I fixed that thing up and um, we actually had a garage in the back that we also fixed up and, and we were trying to move into a better house. So we moved into the garage in the back. We rented out the, the house in the front. And I can tell you that I was a terrible property manager. We lived that way for a couple of years. And basically the first guy that showed up that had cash to go into the house, I, he was the guy that I let in. I didn't have any, any, uh, any type of screening that I did for any of that. So we, we lived like that for a couple of years and then moved into our first property. And I sold that rental property as quickly as I could and said, I don't ever want to do this again. <laughs> <laughs> and then, uh, sure enough, uh, here, here we are 36 years later. Um, and last year I started investing in, in properties again. I, I really like multifamily properties and I really like small multifamily properties. And so I primarily invest in uh, duplexes, fourplexes and triplexes. What market uh, are I, you in, Mac? Where, where where are you? Where what city are you in? In St. Louis, and you know I'm I'm really lucky to be in St. Louis, and it's different than a lot of places in the country. Uh, rents are fairly high, property uh, costs are actually fairly low, so it's uh, it's a pretty easy to get into the the real estate market here, and uh, we've got a really strong uh, rental market here, so it's it's a great place to invest. Fantastic. Fantastic. So, uh, so I know that you have your full time job and you're literally doing this on the side, which is, in my opinion, inspiring for those of you in the same situation. So, tell us what you've done this last year. Uh, well, I started off with uh, with a single property. It was a triplex uh, that I got into last year, and uh, I was making really good cash flow off that that uh, triplex. I, I bought it at a decent price, about one hundred and twenty thousand. Um, I get uh, I got the I see nine one unit rents for nine seventy five and the other two rent for five fifty and so after 
after all my cost, I had you know really nice cash flow coming in off of that. I liked it so much that I bought a a second uh, duplex last year, and then I kind of sat on them for for a while. Uh, and then at the end of last year, um, I kind of made a resolution that uh, since I, I had five, I wanted to pick up uh, eight more units by the end of 2016. And sure enough, in uh, January, February, and March, I did that. And so now I've kind of had to change my goals for the year. So I'm sitting at 13 units right now. Um, I'm looking at trying to acquire at least another uh, eight units, uh, if not more, before the end of the year this year. So let's talk. Let's talk about how you're structuring your deals. Uh, let, let's get into the meat of this. Um, firstly, I think people are going to want to know how you're funding these transactions. So let's let's talk about the first couple and how you finance them. And you know, uh, if you did anything creatively, or you went to the local bank, or what what sorts of things you did to to get these 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 properties closed. Sure. So for the first two last year, I just used uh, you know I took uh, personal loans out to those. And I think okay. a lot of people kind of start that way. Um, and then, uh, but to be honest with you, I'm probably in a little bit different place than a lot of other investors because I'm, I'm pretty far along in the career. I've had, um, you know, with the technology coming I'm with right now, I've had a number of, uh, you know, stock options, stock grants kind of along the way. So what I, what I started doing was I would, I would cash in enough stock, um, to make the down payment. And then I would go to the bank and, and pick up a, a loan, you know, to, to finance the rest. And I so, see, and, and they, these are loans. You said personal loans. I assume these are still loans secured by the properties, correct? They are secured by the properties, and then uh, you know the uh, the I I did those first two in my wife and my in my my name and my wife's name last year, but then mm-hmm. at the beginning of this year when I re- uh, I recognized that I needed to to grow a little bit, I figured you know I need to start, I need to start a company and I need to protect some assets a little bit, so I created a an LLC. Um, I actually did, uh, created warranty deeds for those two properties and moved them under the LLC, and then all the new properties I'm acquiring are, are bought under the LLC. And I'm, oh, that's you know, great. I started doing Can I interject thing. something right there, yeah, Mac? Sure. I want to interject something right there because I'm going to suggest something to you and anybody that's listening, and that is uh, you guys have all heard the analogy of the rotten apple. And, uh, you know, when, and I take asset protection and I've always taken asset protection to a whole nother level, uh, really kind of a insane level, but I, I'm not going to suggest what I did to you guys, but I'm going to tell you that I would not recommend putting too many properties in one LLC. Uh, LLCs are a hundred bucks to form. Yes, you've got to pay for the tax preparation, but I will tell you that, you know, I try not to put more than probably about, 10 properties of your of this size single family homes or plexes in one LLC because if something happens uh you know god forbid something horrible happens and they get past your insurance it can literally deplete the entire asset all the assets in the LLC which is why a lot of you know if if you buy larger properties i would say from 10 units on up I would highly recommend you put each one of those in an individual LLC and have that LLC owned by an operating LLC. So I just want to throw that out there um, that I, I just to be careful how many you put in one LLC. OK, so that, that please continue. I just want to interject that. Yeah, no, that's some great advice. And I actually got the same advice from, uh, from my lawyer. And so that's kind of my plan was I figured I'd put about 10 under and then I may actually even move those out as I build an additional equity into those because right now they're financed uh, pretty much all of them at 80%. So there is some equity in each of those. But as the equity grows, it makes more sense to move, to move them out. So I'm, I yeah. plan on doing that as well. Good. Play it safe. Absolutely. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Um, but anyway, like I was saying, you know, my, my plan had been I would sell enough stock to get the down payments. I would go get commercial loans basically for the, for the properties. And that was working great until my uh, CPA this year came back and said, hey, you've got to quit doing that. We're going to push you into the highest tax bracket that you can, can be if you continue to sell that stock. Um, mm. And so it may – go ahead. No, no, please continue. That's very interesting. Well, it made me rethink um, the way that I was purchasing the properties, to be honest with you. I, I, uh, I thought, well, you know, I, I do want to continue to buy properties because I really enjoy – I enjoy making the deals. I enjoy owning the properties. I enjoy the whole thing. So it's a blast, isn't it? It is an absolute it is, it, blast. It's a lot of right. fun. Um, but uh, it made me think – you know, sort of set back and, and try to get a little more creative. So what I've done um, in the past month or so – is I went and opened up three uh, lines of credit with uh, with the bank. So I actually paid cash for one of the properties last year, 
Um, and so I took that property and I'm using it as collateral on a line of credit um, at mm. a small um, portfolio lender that I've got here uh, in St. Louis. And then okay. I actually use the equity on my on my or in my, in my primary home as another line of credit. And then I took uh, about a hundred thousand dollars worth of stock and I'm using it as collateral on a third line of credit. So that gives me three lines of credit. And then my plan is. Uh, and the properties I'm actually going to go look at this afternoon kind of fit this. But the plan is to buy more distressed type properties, go ahead and pay cash for them out of the line of credit, um, go ahead and you know bring people in to get those things rehabbed and, and fixed up. And then hopefully I can get the appraisal value up um, over the cost of what I've got into the properties enough that I can get I can borrow against that then or you know against those properties and get the get the bulk uh, of your money back. It does, and and my plan is to actually replenish the lines of credit and then continue to do that. So it gives me a good way to continue to invest with really not a lot of money out of my out of my pocket anymore. That's a, that's a great strategy, uh, you know. It, and and if you're buying distressed properties and you know your market well, chances are you will be able to get the lion's share of of your money back out of them. And you know, for those of you that don't have the the um, you know the advantages that Mac has here with uh, the ability to borrow against an asset. Um, you know you can do the same thing with investors. You know you 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 can you can get, find equity investors that and split the deals. That's how I bought shoot probably my first 200 houses and 50 50 investors put up the money. I do all the work and then we we pay cash and we refinance it out and get them the bulk of their money back and they stay in the deal as an equity partner it's a sweet deal for everybody so you know uh, but that's a great strategy mac and 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 chances are uh with your knowledge of that market at this point um from having been involved already and 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 been so successful you'll be able to accomplish that and even if you don't get it all back you know with your cash flow it'll it'll replenish it fairly quickly anyway so yeah, exactly okay so um Tell tell me about what sort of training or education you you gave yourself. I, I I don't know if you're self-taught or if you went and saw somebody at a seminar, if you read some books. Tell tell us about what you did there. I'm you know the majority of the knowledge that I've picked up has just been uh, a lot of research on the internet. I've been you know to a number of podcasts, yours yours included. Um, oh, thank you. Uh, you know, and uh, talking to a lot of experts, I also have joined the local RIA here in, in St. Louis. Actually, there's a couple of local RIAs here, um, and it's great to to be able to network with people that have been have been investing for a while. It also gives me a lot of exposure to not just uh, investors, but wholesalers. Um, you know, uh, uh, just all sorts of of uh, things that that people do in the, in the real estate. That sort mm-hmm. of opens your eyes to what what's possible. So it's all self taught. I never I never had a guru come in and show me how to do anything. But uh, you know, there's a, a lot of research. There's so much information out in the on the internet and just in the general ether that you can go pick up. That I guarantee you, you can you can never stop learning about real estate. No question, no question. So let me ask you this. Um, let me ask you your opinion on a couple of things. One is. What type of person do you think would be best suited for multifamily real estate investing like you're doing? Is, is, there, a, is there a type or a, a, some, some, some personality traits that you think make, uh, make the chances of success uh, more, uh, more possible? So I think that the, the main thing that it requires is someone that's, that will take action, right? You can learn all day long. Um, but if you don't take action and go do something, you're never going to make things kind of work for you. For me, in multifamily, it seemed to uh, oh, and, you know, if you look at multifamily versus single family, what I was always afraid of going into it was I'd get a single family home and then it would rent for a couple of months, and I've got a single uh, stream of income coming in that I'm I'm out for those couple of months. So for me, multifamily seemed to make a lot of sense if I had three or four people, you know, renting a property and I lost, you know, a renter off of off. Of, one part of that property, I've still got income coming in, and I try to buy them so that one or two of the units will actually make the the uh, the loan payment for me. So at least that much is covered. Um, no, that's, I, I, really that's, think, I say the same thing. That's great. Now keep going. I'm sorry. I, I really think the the primary thing, and I've seen so many investors, even uh, you know, as as short a time as I've been in, I've seen people that have been studying and trying to figure out how the market works, and and you know, looking at podcasts and talking to gurus, and they've done it for two or three years. And they, they're just about ready to go do something. 
And, you know, I, I think to be successful, you have to take the time to really learn, but you also have to take the initiative to go do something. You have to get in, you have to get in the game. Fantastic advice. And, and yeah, I, 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 I couldn't agree more. You have to be doing both simultaneously. You need to be out there looking at real estate, making offers while you're studying and, and, you know, go out there and, and immerse yourself in it. Uh, you know, meet the brokers, go look at the properties, go evaluate the fix ups, uh, do market analysis on the rent, see, see what you think you can do on a property. Do a, you know, like, like people do in the stock market where they, where they, where they trade, where they're not actually using their own money. You can do that as well with real estate. Just get out there and, and, uh, and study deals and, uh, it, it, it's it's as much of an education, if not more, than than learning from you know from a seminar or a book. By the way, on books, do you have a, any books that you liked about this about this, uh, uh, or did you get it all online? I know I, I know you said you got a lot of your stuff online, but are there any books that you might recommend? Well, you know, I think pretty much everyone that's that's in real estate probably has read Rich Dad Poor Dad, and for me oh, that yeah. was a, that was a game changer. You know, it's the thing that really made me start thinking about. Uh, about passive income and how that works and, and really just sort of changed my relationship with money. So I'd, I'd say that was a big one. Um, sure. You know, one of the, one of the other ones that I, that I'm in fact, I'm in the middle of it right now is uh, the miracle morning. Um, and it's not mm-hmm. really about real estate, but it does have to do with, uh, you know, setting the appropriate state of mind and making sure that you're focused on goals. And, and uh, you know, that one for me is a huge book as well. Oh, that's great. Thank you for that. I'm going to check that one out myself. Now, you know, what is your ultimate goal here? I mean, you've got, you're very successful. You've been with, with your company for years, one of the big, you know, the biggest company in the world I know for software. And what is, you know, what, why, why are you in real estate? Why are you screwing around with real estate? What's your ultimate goal? So, you know, it's, it's funny. Um, I, I really, to be honest with you, wouldn't have done anything with real estate except that I, I bought a, a lake house for the, and it was going to be a retirement home. But the, the thing is, it's a huge house, and the uh, the utilities on that house were extremely high. So to kind of offset that, I bought some solar panels, and you know that cost me around fifty five thousand. And the the nice thing about that was it would have a I think it was a fifteen year payback on the on the panels. I thought, well, that's not bad. And then the next thing was it, it also runs on propane, which is very expensive. So I was I was looking to see uh, you know what I could use to offset that. And when we started talking about geothermal, the quotes I got in were a hundred thousand dollars for geothermal. And I thought, oh my gosh, I could buy a rent house <laughs> and make enough right. off of that to be able to get that back. And then that that sort of that little seed germinated somewhat, and that's what actually got me to buy the the first one. And so. After Just being able to thing. offset offset your costs, you know, and that you know, you, you're blessed that you have a, a vacation house. But you know, for somebody that's just got a job, just being able to offset maybe their income, even you know, or 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 exactly. some other expense in their life. So so you saw an expense, and you saw real estate as an opportunity to offset that expense. I definitely did. And then as I got further into it, uh, you know, I've always had uh, investments in the stock market, and they've always done fairly well for me. But the thing that I don't like about the stock market is Someone else is in charge of my money, and, and I really have to rely on them making good decisions um, to to make sure that my money is doing well. So I always wanted a way to diversify, and so what I've started doing is taking you know a fairly good chunk of that out. And my plan is to continue to diversify that back into real estate. I, I won't ever get out of the market entirely, but I do like the fact that I can control what happens with real estate. Um, and I'm the guy making the deal, so I'm the person that's a lot more in charge of what those look like. Ultimately, Absolutely. to be honest with you, I don't have the runway that, you know, had I done this when I was 30 years old, I, I think that, you know, I could have a, a pretty big company by the time I got to be 55 or 60. Starting at, at 55 and going forward, to be honest with you, my goal really is to get to about 35 units, maybe 40 units. And I think mm-hmm. that that will be enough to, to really sort of augment the income I've got in retirement and to, and to help me, you know, achieve all the things that I want to do in retirement. Absolutely. No, there's nothing better. And that's why the podcast is called Lifetime Cash Flow Through Real Estate Investing. And you're you're a great example of that in process. Now, let me ask you this. Are are you uh, managing your own property then, I take it? I'm not. I actually have a... Oh, you're not? No, I, okay. I, I was afraid that, that as I got into it, especially, you know, the experience I had when I was a young, a young man, uh, not screening renters appropriately, I, I just thought, well, I, I really don't want to have to do this. And I don't want to go be working on uh, toilets in the middle of the night when I have things I have to do you know, the next day at work. 
So sure. um, I was lucky enough to find a really great realtor. And the, real, the realtor I use is also an investor, and she um, has had her own uh, property management company for a while as well. So she actually manages all my properties for me as well. And she's doing a good job. Oh, she's doing a fantastic job. You know, I, I just out of curiosity, from, what's she, what's she charging? Uh, what's she uh, charging? And then I want to hear the war stories. So she's she's charging me ten percent. And 10%, you know, what I do is okay. is make sure that I buy the properties uh, in such a way that that you know I account for that. Um, and then so far, I've been lucky enough to be able to do that and still have you know great cash flow out of them too. Okay. Okay. What war stories? Uh, she, oh, she's told you war stories. I got you. Yeah, I could tell you well, war stories too. <laughs> other investors as well have told me, man, I just, you know, they just they just hate using uh, uh, property managers. But I've just really had good luck with with her the whole the whole yeah, time that, that I've been You, you might have. Yeah. You it sounds like you found a good one, and I will tell you that uh, typically I advise against using a management company. Uh, I've managed my own stuff for what thirty plus years now, and and. Uh, uh, you know, the, the problem being, uh, you typically have to manage the manager. Uh, and, but, uh, you're, you're very generous in what you're paying her. I will tell you, uh, you know, and, 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 and I would renegotiate that once you get much bigger. But, uh, I am also familiar with the St. Louis market because, uh, my wife's from Belleville, which is over on the other side of the river there. Oh, yeah. And, uh, yeah. So I, I know it quite well. And, and, but, uh, no, I, 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 and that's, you know, with, with you having a full-time gig, you know, I, I, I see how important that would be. Uh, and, and, and like I say, you're very lucky, but if, if you're going to, if you're going to use a management company, you need to screen them as well as you would a tenant, maybe even better. And, and you don't want one that's too big. And you, frankly, you don't want one that you're their only client. Uh, you want to find somebody like, like Max found here that's, you know, does it, still does real estate maybe, maybe as a realtor. I, I've used a realtor in my Memphis properties and that worked fairly well when I just had 10 houses left up there. So, okay. Well, that, that's super. So, uh, you know, one more question here. What suggestions would you have for someone starting out in real estate investing? What, 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 you know, I know that you mentor some people. You mentioned to, that to me previously at your RIA group. Tell me what, what, you, what you would suggest to them if you gave them a little pearl of wisdom. You know, the, the thing I think that's important is, first of all, you've got to get educated. You've got to know what you're doing or, or you can really get yourself in trouble with real estate. So I think, you know, that's the key. First of all, you have to, you have to start learning and you have to continue to learn. But, you know, I think, especially if you're thinking about a younger person, and I'm saying this because my son wants to, to start investing too, and the thing that I told him was really, you know, as, as a young person, it, it probably would be good for you to, to partner up with someone. Um, you know, find someone that's been in the business for a while that really kind of knows what they're doing. Find a way that you can provide value back to that person. Um, and then, you know, bring them a deal. Go analyze deals until you find something that works. Bring them a deal. Ask for a cut of the deal. It doesn't have to be 50-50, but it's a great way for you to learn the ropes and actually get started. And, and to be honest with you, I, you know, that's a really good way to start. I love it. Absolutely love it. That is fantastic advice. Uh, is there a question I haven't asked you that you wish I had? Is there something you'd like to expand on maybe that, that maybe I hadn't asked you about? Well, you know, one of the things that that I think is really important, Rod, is, um, you know, it's, it's not all about just the investor. It's actually about the team that you build to go to make things happen. Right. And okay. so I'll, I'll tell you, um, you know, I'm really proud of the team that I pulled together. I, I did a lot of research when I pulled in, when I got my CPA, when I got my lawyer, when I got my real estate agent, you know, all those people that are helping me, I made sure that they either were investors themselves or that they, like in the case of my CPA, she deals with a lot of books for others, for other investors. So she knows the, she knows that business really well. And so, you know, as I form that team, I want people that are, are people of integrity, first of all. And then I want people that know the industry and I want people that are experts in their field. And so, you know, I think part of the, success that you have with real estate is the, the type of team that you pull together to help you because no one person can do it. And so, um, you know, to me, it, uh, building the right team is just super critical. I, I couldn't agree more. That's, that's, that's also great advice. Now, let me ask a question for the people that don't have a team put together yet. Tell me how you went about finding this team. Did you just do it by asking brokers, asking friends? Uh, how, how did you find these, these people that you're very happy with? Well, I stayed away from friends because I don't really have any friends to, that, that invest in real estate very much. But uh, Fair I, did spend, I did spend a lot of time in the RIA, 
uh, you know, talking to other investors to ask, you know, and who do they use? And then I would interview those people. So I actually interviewed uh, two or three different lawyers until I found one that sort of had the same uh, philosophy and mentality that I do. And, and that was the guy that, you know, he came recommended from other investors. And then, you know, uh, after talking with him, he, he really felt like the person that I could get along with and, and work with really well. Same thing with the CPA. So a lot of it um, came about from just the local RIA and asking other investors who they use, get recommendations, and then interviewing those people. Fantastic. As, a, as I mentioned to you, we're getting near the end of the show here, and I just have one thing that is really dear to my heart uh, that I want to ask you about. Um, you know, we, as I mentioned, we do a, sometimes we do these driving force episodes about the psychology of success and talk about goals and things of that nature. Where do you get your drive? What, what, what makes you jump out of bed in the morning to conquer the world and, and, and drives you? Uh, you know, I've always been pretty goal oriented. Um, but I tell you, I read a book, um, I think it was maybe last year or the year before last called the one thing. Have you ever heard of that? No, I haven't. That's great. Another good it's one. A, it's another great book. So, um, it, it really, for the first time gave me a way to set goals in a way that made sense to me. Um, you know, prior to reading that book, I would set goals and I would work toward those goals. And I always did, you know, pretty, pretty well with that. But this book actually laid it out in such a way that, um, you look at, at a long-term goal for a year, and then you break down what are the components of that that I can get done? What's the one thing I can do this month that will ensure that I hit that goal by the end of the year? And then what's the one thing I can do this week that will ensure I get that one thing done by the end of the month that will make sure I get that, that goal by the end of the, the, the year? Wow. And then finally, I love that. What's, what's the one thing this week that gets me to the month, that gets me to the year? And then what's the one thing that I can do today? that will right. ensure that if I do it continuously for the next five days, I get to that week and it, it moves up. And that single philosophy <laughs> has made a huge change in my life. And then incorporating that into what I'm doing with uh, the Miracle Morning is, is just a fantastic way to, to you know, set, set your direction correctly and make sure that you're moving the right way. Love it. Uh, great, great stuff. In fact, I'm definitely going to run out and get that one thing book. I, I totally see the value in that mindset with goals. I'm big on goals. And in fact, uh, uh, just this morning released, uh, uh, an episode on goal setting. It's a whole workshop, uh, that people can download a goal setting guide and go through the workshop with me. Uh, it's not one of these podcasts you can listen to on the phone and or in the car or while you're working out. You actually have to be sitting and writing. But uh, that's great advice with that one thing book. Listen, I really appreciate your time, Mac. Uh, you've added a lot of value to the listeners today, and uh, I hope we can stay in touch and, and keep an eye on each other's uh, progress. Yeah, sounds great, Rod. I really appreciate being on the program. I really, uh, you know, I think what you're doing is a valuable thing. I, you know, anytime that you can share knowledge with people, it always comes back to you, and that's my big philosophy as well. Couldn't, couldn't agree more. Listen, you take care. Talk soon. Thanks. Thank you for listening to the Lifetime Cash Flow through Real Estate Investing Podcast. If you've enjoyed the show, please subscribe and then take a moment to visit iTunes and leave a five-star rating and review. For more resources to connect with us further, please visit our website at lifetimecashflowpodcast.com. Tune in next week for our next show.